Hi, my name is Michael Tyberski, and I directed and co-wrote The Sound of Silence. Harry Call in the conversation is another kind of, you can't really beat that in, in my mind in terms of someone who is obsessed with sound but also going through a mental breakdown is really kind of the gold standard for me in terms of sound design but also movies about sound. And I love the tactile quality of that movie. I mean, it's the, the period it was shot in, but the scrubbing sounds of going through audio reels is very intimate and I really just, I can't get enough of that quality. The tools are very important, and when I think about sound, even though it's this thing that you can't always touch, it's, uh, it's something about being able to physically manipulate sound, as they do in that movie, through this character who's kind of using analog reels and these kind of plastic buttons. It makes the process very physical, and that's, that's something that was definitely played into the inspiration to how we conceived our character, who is someone who is working in a contemporary setting, but is also kind of stuck in the past, but likes having that physical relationship with his equipment. I really like older tools, older equipment. I'm, I'm someone who grew up with analog equipment. There might be um, digital technology that's faster, but Peter, our character in our film, is not someone who's interested in speed. He's really interested in capturing the data and understanding sound. So the tools, he has the philosophy that if it's not broke, he doesn't need to fix it. So this is the way he's always done it. I had a great prop master on the film named Stephen Phelps, who is a fabricator in his own right, but also was able to source a lot of the real props that we wanted that were working in a lot of ways. And Peter's tool bag, Peter Sarsgaard's an actor who, his character had a lot of props in his satchel, so wanted to also have a lot of props all the, all the time in that satchel, and uh, really took the time to get to know them and be an expert in it before the camera started rolling as well. It's also, when we looked at, the house tuner is a fictional profession, but when you look at actual acoustical engineers and the sound scientists of sorts that we found, some of the tools that Peter uses are actually based on what people are using today. So that's kind of what the analog equipment is all about. And Peter's someone who still uses an answering machine because even though everyone else is around him is using a cell phone, that's a distraction. That's something that can be an interruption in his day. So he just wouldn't enter that into the equation. Those gentlemen are called the Noise Bait and Commission. They were tasked by the Department of Health in New York City to go out and record the din of the city, record and document the decibel level, which was a new form of measurement at that time, and understand kind of how loud parts of New York City were. So that they felt like they fit right into the world of this movie. Because Peter's character is someone who, he essentially modifies everything. Even if he sends you a new toaster in the mail, he's gonna make an alteration to it. So he's someone who tinkers a lot. And at one point in the film, the Peter Sarsgaard character gives Rashida Jones's character kind of like a, we call it a, a white noise muffler in the script, uh, but it's this the device that you, you plug into an electrical outlet and it emits a, a soft tone. So, I mean, that's something that was invented for the movie. It was great to be able to build a world around that kind of plasticky kind of technology that I, that, that I love from that certain era that sounds a certain way, that looks a certain way, can get dusty. It's really appealing to me. 